Hello there, this is Kush Sharma from Creative Pad Media and in this tutorial, I will be showing you an amazing and pretty much a free AI tool which I have not shown in any of my videos till now, which will help you create some product shots that look really professional and are inspired by a shot that you really liked somewhere but could not use that shot because obviously you don't own it. So let's take an example. Let's say that you are someone who wants to do beer product photography. So then let's say if we go to Google and if we just type in, in images, beer photography, we start to see some really nice images. And let's say that you get, you really like one of these and you get inspired by it and you want to create something similar. So how can we use AI to do this in a legal way? So let's say I've given you a reference image here, which I'm just going to be showing you. Let's say that we went through a lot of images and finally we ended up liking this particular image because this was an image that I found on Google. Now we can't directly use this image obviously because there are two problems with it. First of all, it's not our image. And secondly, let's say, yeah, the glass is fine because this is generic, but let's say if there's a bottle, you obviously want to use your own product bottle here. So these are the issues with it, but you really like the look of the shot. So how can we create something similar using AI and then use it legally also? So if we go back, and let me just show you this tool. Oh, let me just go back here. If you just go to Google and just type in reimagine AI free pick. I've also given the link to down uh, to this particular tool in the description. You will be able to locate it there. And it's not completely free, but it does give you five trials. And what this tool does is, like the name suggests, reimagine you upload something that you like, and it's going to create AI variations of that which are very close to that particular image, okay? So once you go here, you'll just have to like create an account somewhere it'll come, it'll be free, there's no uh, problem in creating the account. And once you do create an account, you can use this tool, which I'm just gonna show you how it looks after I hit run, uh, run reimagine. You're gonna get five uses per day, which is more than enough as you're gonna find out, okay? So after you've created your free account with free pick here, uh, just, hit this button which says run reimagine and as you're going to see that most of my photos will already be reflecting here and so as you can see what we are going to do uh, do here is and I've already done it before so it's showing me otherwise you'll probably see this empty here that we upload that image that we found on Google and then we just hit reimagine and it just reimagines these shots like this okay so this was from a different image so the look is different and then I tried it with that same reference reference image that I just showed you and you can see right it starts to get closer but these are not the same images anyway let's just do this process because they, these are obviously from the last time I did it so we're going to hit upload and let's upload that particular image and I'll also be talking about some of the options here all right so here are the images that we are going to be using so I've given you these images it'll be in a zip folder you'll be able to get this in case you exactly want to do what I'm doing right now just for the first time okay so the first one is the Google reference image so let's just open this here and then we also have a product image which we'll use for compositing in Photoshop and um, this was the image initially uh, that I got it like I really liked uh, what it had generated so I'm going to be using this inside Photoshop later on but right now let's at least see the results here so upload the image here uh, then there's this option that says flux or classic so they think of it like this they're just kind of updating the model on how good the model is so right now if it says beta it means it's still in development but because we can use it okay I'm just going to select flux it probably means that it's a better model okay so that's it now we could have, if we had a plain, uh, a paid plan of free pick AI, we could have even edited this prompt. But if I hit edit, it's just going to take me to the pricing. So we don't right now want to pay for it. But otherwise, you can even reimagine these images, but add some stuff on your own by changing the prompt. But right now, this is the prompt that it has recognized. We can't really edit it on the free version. If you want, you can even change the styles of the the style of the photos that are going to soon appear okay so if you want uh, do you want them to be 3d illustrations like a comic you can change all that uh, i haven't played played too much around with it so i just i'm just going to leave it at no style so that it just sticks to the original okay uh, you can even change the aspect ratio if you want we're going to stick to the original right now 
This is important. Imagination, we have three options, subtle, vivid, or wild. So subtle will mean that when you do uh, hit this button, the variations that you're going to get will be as close to the uh, original as possible. So the variations will be very subtle. Vivid to the next level, wild will be like, Pretty much I've seen that it just turns the image totally. So I'm going to stick to somewhere in between that we are saying, yeah, we're giving you the liberty, but don't change it too much. Okay. So uh, you can even change the number of variations you want here. Let's just leave it at the default and let's hit reimagine. And it takes, doesn't really take too much time. So let's just wait for these variations to come. And you can see, right, this looks fantastic. So very close to the original, but there are some subtle differences also right so you can see like this thing has been added these fruits have been added here but they just look amazing right so you can see right something like this looks really good and yeah so you can select any one of them you can hit download this is going to be a slightly downscaled image it's not a problem because we're going to be taking this back to photoshop and we're going to create a composite with our own product image like you're going to be seeing right now. But what is the advantage of this? Once you do download this image, because this has been generated by AI, now we don't have those legal issues. We are not directly using the original image. Yeah, probably might be slightly unethical that we got inspired and directly uploaded that image here. But legal, from a legal point of view, you can use this image commercially after you use it for compositing. Because right now, on an average, the the law in AI dictates that if something has been created by AI, pretty much nobody has a copyright on it. So even if you use it, you can use it commercially. The only downside is that since you don't own the copyright, anyone else can use that particular image that you are creating right now. That's the only downside. But the, but the point is, you can use this commercially, okay? So I'm going to, I already, uh, like I said, uh, showed you that I had generated some images before and I had really liked this one. Again, it just, you saw that image right there also. So I'm going to be using this because I've practiced already on this image. So I'm going to open this image in Photoshop and our only task now will be to just replace the bottle with our own bottle that we need for our own shoot, okay? So let's go to Photoshop, let's open up this image and let's open up that product image also. All right, so I've just opened up the image inside Photoshop. We need to remove this bottle and I've also given you this sample image of just like a random bottle. Of course, this will be the point where, let's say I'm assuming that you have taken the pro your own products shot and you just, it's a normal looking shot like this with maybe just normal background. And then we're gonna create a composite. So here also we're gonna be using AI. So what we're gonna do is first of all, we need to get rid of this bottle because if you think of it, this bottle is AI generated, doesn't really exist. There's no, uh, you know, brand like this or something so we need to just get rid of the bottle altogether so for this we can use the remove tool which is again ai powered so i can just make the brush slightly bigger or we could have also used generate a fill for this but the remove tool just quickly does the job and usually doesn't really take too many goes so let's just wait for this All right, so that's pretty much gone and you can see that is really, really neat. So let's now bring this product here. So here's the trick now. If you're good with Photoshop, of course, you can make a nice selection. You can use your normal ways of creating a composite. All that can be done by adding shadows and all. But since these days, most of my videos are focusing on AI and how efficient these processes can become. I just want to show you a way by which this can be done with AI. It doesn't always work. So let's see. But what I like to do is if I have something like this, let's just take the lasso tool, let's just encircle it in a rough way and hit control command C, control command V. So control command C is for copy. So it's just going to copy this area. We're going to take it back here and we're just going to paste this. Now, like I told you, remember the reimagine picture is downscaled, right? So this is much smaller than uh, this particular image that I had, which was much bigger. So I'm just going to slightly transform this with this layer, control command T and let's just get it right to the size that we would want it on this particular table, okay? Let me just zoom in a bit and maybe slightly smaller. Maybe the scale is not 100% right. Probably the glass is too big for the bottle, but right now we're not really focusing on that part, right? I think even this doesn't look bad actually. So just getting the position right here. I think yeah, something like this is fine because the trick that I'm going to show you will save you a lot of time when it comes to manually compositing. Okay, so the trick is this. We have this white part here. If we can only select this white area and basically any area from this layer except for the bottle, 
and run generate a fill with an empty prompt, it usually just removes the background in such a way that it also just adds a subtle shadow and a change in lighting so that it just in one go it makes it a composite. You'll understand when I actually show you this. But the first task in order to do that is how do we exactly select this white part only? This is a bit tricky in Photoshop, okay? Because not as easy as selecting this bottle and then just inverting the selection because if you do that, it's gonna select the entire canvas on the inverse. We just want this white part here, okay? So here's the thing. If I hit Control Command and then, or hold down Control Command and hit on this, we get just the boundary as a selection, right? And now what we can do is we can just subtract the selection of this bottle and then what we'll be left with will be just the areas that we need to run generative fill on. So this, you can either use the object selection tool, but since a lot of people use versions of Photoshop which don't uh, maybe have uh, this tool, I just wanna show you slightly a manual approach here, which is I can just take the quick selection tool and just hold down Alt Option so that you go in the subtraction mode and just our task here is to select the bottle, okay? So just gonna speed things up till the time I have an accurate selection. Like I said, if you have the object selection tool, you could have used that also. All right, so that didn't take long at all. And now that we have this white part selected, and I don't even mind if the reflection has got selected here because wood won't cast a, too, uh, a strong reflection like this. So it's okay if the reflection goes away. And then remember, when you use generative fill, if you just leave it empty and hit generate, it's supposed to remove things, right? So we're not gonna type anything here because we want this to be removed. And then just hit generate and let's wait for the results. All right, so you can see here that we have been able to get a decent result. Let's check all the three variations. You can see that it does leave an outline sometimes. That's not gonna be a problem at all because we can use pretty much any tool. But why I like it is because in some variations, ultimately you're gonna see that it, you know, kind of maintains that shadow or sometimes even adds the shadow, sometimes adds the lighting according to the scene. So just see, it's like before, after, okay? Before, after. So let's see which one looks the best. This is the first one. Let's just hide this uh, as compared to the original. Yeah, this looks fine. Maybe, I think this one looks the be best because it also just added a bit of the lighting. So I think we'll choose this. Now all we need to do is we just need to remove this bad looking thing which was around the selection. So I'm just gonna stamp everything onto a new layer by using the shortcut control command, alt option, shift plus E so that yeah, it's slightly destructive, but it's okay now that we have this on a separate layer. Now we can use something like maybe, again, the remove tool. Let me just zoom in a bit. And then we can just, you know, just run it on the, these areas. Just be, I'll probably do the part on the glass later. Should have just kept the bottle slightly to the right. Actually, I did that when I was practicing, but now that I'm making the video, of course, something has to go wrong. So let's just wait for this. But I think it usually does a pretty neat job here. You can see here, the only issue is probably here. If it corrects that, maybe in order to... Right. So that's gonna mess things up. So probably when you do something like this, usually a good idea is to use generative fill again. So that's gonna fix things up. Let's just wait for this. All right, so that's fixed it up. So again, let's just stamp everything onto a new layer. So this is what we have got, right? And you can see, right, we didn't have to manually add the shadows, change the lighting, because Generative Fill is sometimes smart enough to do it with that trick that I uh, showed you. And then let's say, like, if you further want to use some more AI tools, like, let's say, let's change the composition a bit. You can probably crop it, get the bottle in rule of thirds like this, and, you know, just give it more space here. Use Generative Expand, make sure the AI generative expand option is enabled so that it also fills up that area. So that's another AI tool that you can use for your product shots. All right, so that doesn't look bad at all. And finally, if you just see the first image that we started off with, it also had this crushed ice. So in case you wanna add some things here, now it's an easy task. You can go to the original layer, not to the expand layer that we just used. Let's go here because this is where the details are. And then just make a selection and probably you can use something like generative fill again and just type in crushed ice. Not always gonna work. In case it 
doesn't right now. I'm just going to show you a screenshot that it does work because I got a pretty neat shot of this crushed ice. All right, so this, the, these are the results that we got this time. Now, this time doesn't look that good. But like I told you, right, sometimes this happens when I'm making the video. It always won't work. But if you keep trying, it will work. But just to save time, this is a screenshot in front of you that, yes, sometimes on the first go, it does work and it does look good. But just keep trying maybe one or two variations and it's going to get there. But you can see, right, this is a great way to create shots, professional looking AI shots, which you have a legal right to use uh, commercially. In case you are someone you're interested in learning about AI and product photography, then just last week I released my brand new course called Product Photography AI Editing Using Photoshop and the AI in Adobe Firefly. So we use Photoshop and Firefly both. So brand new course, which has four hours of content, 32 videos. So if you are interested in learning all this in much more detail, then do check out that course. It is available via Udemy. The link will be given in the description. And in case you like this video, give it a thumbs up because these days I am creating a lot of videos which deal with using AI for photo editing. So don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time.